Well, here we are again for part three. Let's get straight into it this time and we'll start looking at the rear vision camera and a lot more goodies still to come. So sit back and enjoy. By the way, if you haven't done so already, please press the subscribe button and the little bell so you get an email as soon as a video is put up on YouTube. Thank you. See you shortly. This is the Halo View camera. It has a microphone and LEDs for night vision. It's routed straight through the back of the uh, caravan all the way down to the number plate lights and the right hand side one wires were very easily accessible and so I just switched the side lights on in the car which activates the camera. The screen mounted on the dashboard, very accessible indeed, two little antennas and a beautifully clear picture all the way through. It is very configurable in the fact that you've got lots of bits and pieces to do. You can mirror it, you can play videos through it as well. You can pair it with uh, your uh, system. You can record audio and vision as well. That just shows it's starting to pair. Uh, it's already paired, so I'll waste that. And that's the picture that you get. Now, I walked around to the back of the caravan, as you'll see very shortly, uh, just to see what it looked like. I haven't seen myself in this camera before, so here we go. He's going to walk around, and so we can see. A little bit out of shape, I'm not uh, that small, honest. And there you go. Well, as you can see, we have a 19-inch Telesat LED TV. Quite small, with very small speakers, not very good. So we decided to attach a, another unit via the earphone and USB socket, which is this little system here. There is, on the back of the main box, a volume control as well. That's how to connect it. So simple, just two plugs and while we're traveling it sits inside a cupboard so it can't fall around on the floor while we're traveling the television lays flat on the seat uh, and then we cover that up with a couple of cushions just to make something make sure something doesn't fall now we do need television we have a television and in order to get the signal here in new zealand to our dish style television uh, we need a dish on the roof, which is very easy to fit. In this caravan, the original English aerial came down inside the wardrobe. And so here I am inside. As you can see, after I fitted the dish pole all the way through the existing hole, which didn't have to be widened or anything, it fitted straight in. It was away from the wall, so I did have to make a block of wood and sealed that in with some Sikaflex and that really is all that I can show you as far as that's concerned. The fitting on the roof is very easy to do and that is done up more or less finger tight and then just tightened slightly and is completely waterproof. Now as you will see I've put a blue piece of masking tape on the shaft which tells me where the television aerial should go up to. Now just inside here there is a little mark and this is wound up by just turning the little knurled handle at the bottom of the uh, aerial shaft and that will go all the way up to where it should be. So we'll do that very quickly. Whoops, tipping the camera around here. So that should be somewhere in the region of the right degrees. Then we move up and slacken off the clamp around the uh, aerial, and then we can move this round to wherever it needs to be the amount of degrees. Now with the compass 
pointing to due north or thereabouts. The base of it, the white uh, clear perspex, uh, that is set to approximately 300 and 40, 318 degrees, which is right for this area, within a degree. And so that tells me that along that line, the line of the compass, along that line is where the aerial should be facing. And so I take that into the wardrobe with me, put it down, make it go to true north and then point the dish in approximately that direction and then set up the television from there. So easy, can be done in probably a minute or so. Now as you can see the dish is up there and we've got a very strong wind today and it is just moving. We are at the motor mover section and the motor mover is on the right, the motor is on the left with the red wire going away from it. Of course there are two sets of those. The crank handle is used to pull the unit onto the wheel. It can be quite tight in this model. There are two shafts going all the way through which are adjustable for the varying widths of where you want them to be put and secured by four bolts uh, on each shaft. Inside, under the seat, there is the unit that does all the work for you and that is situated just behind the battery. Must remember to take off the handbrake. I forgot to do this the first time I did it and stopped it. Well, never mind. We now can move the caravan in whichever way that we want. We can spin it round. We can do almost anything with it, as I'm trying to demonstrate here. It's nice and easy to move. It is just a little jerky when you uh, start off, but of course this is electric motors we're dealing with here. Moving now towards the car, remembering to take the dust cover off the high-rise, uh, which is a trick that um, I sometimes forget as well. And now it's just a matter of negotiating the camera to the, the caravan to the car. And here we go, we're getting it as close to being over the top of the ball as we possibly can. It's got fine adjustments on it and uh, with having a plastic bumper of course if you do make a mistake it's quite good. Wind it down and attach it as you normally would. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching this video. Next time we'll be having a look at the electrics, some solar power information and how to drain water from your water heater. In most cases it can be done very very simply indeed. Now remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button, tinkle the bell, and then you will get a video next time I upload uh, a video. So for now, this is Peter saying cheers for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.